JD here, Tyrrell Lewis, and as you can see, we are back on F1 2021, because the last video I did was on iRacing at Silverstone, and just want to say a massive thank you to the support on that. Didn't realise there'd be so many people who would actually enjoy me playing a different racing game, so therefore in the future we will be exploring the likes of iRacing and Assetto Corsa, because it does feel very satisfying to be trying other racing titles but we're back on here now on pc for f1 2021 this is a members lobby and there's one person in particular here who had a few races before this in some five lappers qvr moonfall stay out for that name because he is very very fast so we put on a custom grid here and as usual no one can seem to drive in a straight line nicely. <laughs> so we're in last place, uh, starting on the medium tyre. And as usual, we are going to be showcasing the full race. So this is the full 25% in this PC lobby, which was a very competitive one. Uh, but particularly, like so we've got Daniel in here as well. Uh, and Moonfall. That guy was really, really fast. And he's actually a YouTube uh, member of mine so if you do want some priority invites to lobby such as this in the future on all platforms then click the join button and you will be able to join if you are available i'll be doing much more after christmas just gonna take a little break for a while let myself refuel a little bit but in this race here um we did a couple races before this and he beat me each time so i was very very determined to try and get the upper hand once again so now we're in a 25 percent race here and as usual absolute carnage and we're going to be using our straight line speed because i actually put my front wing down one click uh, just for a bit better straight line speed. so it's kind of going outside here but in an open lobby unfortunately contact is still inevitable no matter how much room you seem to give people <laughs> and razek uh he's another youtube member one unfortunately got caught up in that and he, again, is a very, very fast driver himself. But myself on Moonfall have managed to find our way through this carnage, both on the medium tyres. And that's really a straight head-to-head. -head. And with a 25%, this is where a little bit more of the consistency comes in rather than the sprint mind mentality of a five-lap race. Or I think a lot of people who are very, very good over the time trial, they're very good at pushing to 100% all the time. But then over a race, and this is what I say in my one-to-one -to -one coaching sessions with people, is that you've got to treat it a little bit more like a marathon, where if you push all the time, it's going to be very, very easy to become inconsistent. But you can see here at the moment, he definitely has the pace. We've got to make sure we stay within the DRS zone, which you should be able to do quite comfortably. Running that five front wing, which I normally run six, eight wings around here. But running at five just so I can have the upper hand in a straight line if I need it. So my strategy here was to try and go a lap longer. Because the undercut isn't that significant around here. As long as you have enough battery for the outlap. Then you should be able to limit the damage of what the undercut is. So that is the plan of action at the moment. So coming through into here. You can see he definitely has some very, very good speed as... A few people are setting the fast up in the race. CBA and Moonfall does a 28.8, but that's automatically beaten by the soft runner of Andre behind us, and who obviously is going to be a little bit faster on the softs in the first stint here. So, got two options. You can either pit early for the softs, go for the undercut and track position, but if you can try and hang it out a little bit, then fresh softs are normally quite a bit quicker. Uh, on this game here so we just go slide behind him here and when i'm in this kind of situation i'm always looking ahead at the traffic seeing if there's an opportunity to overtake him and then put another car between myself and my rival so that's what i'm looking at here now see we've managed to save the battery uh, pretty nicely so the gap is about 1.7 seconds up to razor in a ferrari who i believe is another youtube member of mine so come through to here 
Let's see if we actually decide to go for the overtake this time. We're using the battery powers. It looks like we are. Because exactly as I was saying there, I'm trying to think ahead. And now I'm going to try and get amongst these cars. I really want to catch this pack up ahead first. To try and put multiple cars between myself and Moonfall. Um, so I can go a little bit longer on the strategy without losing too much. So I'm going to be using the bit of the battery again. We set the fastest up of a race with the aid of the DRS of a 128.2. And I use these kind of races to really, really practice for league racing. And this is what I've said to many people who I've had the privilege of doing a one-to-one -one session with. Is that in these kind of races, I treat it like a league race. So the way I use the battery, knowing where to overtake. And sometimes if you don't have the raw pace, which... To be honest, that's probably one of my weakest areas is just the raw pace over one lap. You make up for in terms of consistency and just outsmarting your opponents as well in terms of how you use the battery when you're pushing, when you're attacking, just knowing when to attack at times. And if you can learn how to do that for experience, normally you don't have to be the fastest car on track to have the most success. Especially when it's over a season, such as a league racing season. So coming through into here, making sure we get in the DRS zone here. And see, Moveall actually has picked up a time penalty here. Which again, in a 25% and 50%, you definitely get more punished for that. Unlike in a five lapper. So stretching them out a little bit here. And now the goal is to try and get past some of these cars. And put them between myself and him. But we do have a guy called CBA who's at the head of his train. As we set another fast up of the race with the DRS. He also seems to be pretty handy on the pace as well. So let's see what we can do about these soft runners up ahead of us here. Not thinking about Gundy inside there. It's always a, a pretty awkward corner to go down the inside. Because normally they get a better run on the outside. But coming through to here, we're just going to use our straight line speed with the five, eight wings. And that's quite a comfortable move. So we've done what we wanted to do. We've put a car between myself and Moonfall. So the next goal is to try and get past AJ in the Williams as quick as I possibly can. And I had a, another few races of him afterwards. And he turned out to be a pretty aggressive driver. So at the time, I didn't realize... How aggressive he could potentially be here. But you can see he's using a bit of the boost down this straight. I'm going out wide as well. So it looks like he really wants to secure his position. And these are the kind of things you actually need to pick up on a little bit. So I'm not actually using the battery here. Because I knew that he would be using his. Plus he has the DRS from the car ahead. So there's no point in using it. So I'm just going to conserve it. And I've probably saved myself about 10% battery. By just making that decision. So those kind of small decisions... As silly as they sound, actually add up quite significantly if you do it consistently throughout a race. So, again, I can tell this guy doesn't really want to let me pass too much in a hurry. So, we're just going to keep it here. We've still got a car between myself and Moonfall as well. And so going through these corners, I gain quite a bit of speed. Let's see if I use A of the battery on the exit. Go use a little bit of a boost, but then we're going to turn it off nice and early. So we're still in the process of saving the ERS. But Moonfall behind has, I think, just finally got past Razor. But at what cost has he used too much battery? That is the question here. And I decided to attack AJ here because I suspected he used a little bit of his battery. So I'm just trying to make him use his. And then when I feel he's low, that's when I know I can 100%. Um, overtake him so let's see if his red light flashes going down the straight it'll be interested to know how much ERS he has used as we're over 85% of the battery right now so we're going to use it on the exit let's see what happens here and again his red light is flashing so our suspicions have been confirmed to be true and coming through to here he unfortunately hits the back of CBA so again just a little bit too eager CBA pits and Moonfall decides to follow me through. But the good thing is, I think we have much, much more battery than everyone in this pack. Because again, I think the mistake a lot of people make 
especially on playing in this game, is that they overcommit with the battery and they leave themselves in a very vulnerable position, which I know I have so many commas of people saying to me, why do you have so much battery? And the answer is that I'd rather have extra ammunition for if I need it. I want to win the race as efficiently as possible. Yeah, I could take a few more risks, but I only really take those risks when I have to. And when I know the move is going to be guaranteed to be completed. If that sounds or if that makes any sense whatsoever. So I know I still have probably a lot more battery than Moonfall at this stage. Also CBA who has a time penalty himself. So we've managed to keep it very consistent so far. But in these lobbies, I really like to try and win uh, on track um, as well. And also with the battery, I always try and make sure I keep it as clean as I can. So I always treat this like I do with a league race. Maybe not in the same terms of life and death seriousness, but in terms of how I drive with the battery and the track limits. Uh, you want to practice for what you're going to be doing. So I do a little dummy to the pits. That sends him into the pit so that's exactly what i wanted so now i'm actually going to be pushing on this lap with the battery a lot more and let's see what we can do so he was slightly ahead gap is 28.6 seconds behind to cba so let's keep an eye on that gap so now i'm going to be pushing quite hard on this in lap so when i drive in league racing i typically leave a little bit of room for error on the table about five percent so I'm driving about 95%, so I'm still pushing, but just making sure I hit the right part of the track every single time. Whereas now here, this is where I'm giving it that extra 5%. And you can see we're actually going quicker in the first sector. And the gap is still 28.6. Now it's just fallen to 28.5. So we're really doing a good job at managing this undercut. And with the straight line speed that I put on with the five front wing, and with the fresher tyres, we should be in a very, very strong position at the end of this race. So that is the goal here. Coming through to here. Now we are not pushing at 95%. Now we're giving it absolutely everything. And we're actually slightly up on our own fastest lap. And you can see the undercut hasn't really happened so far. So coming into the pits, we've used a lot of our battery and stuff. So it says 34%. And a lot of people say to me, why don't you keep using the battery? If you look on that top bar, that's how much deployment you have left. So just because you have 40% doesn't mean you can use 40% remaining. I would only be able to use maybe another 5 or 10% remaining before it goes completely depleted. So now we're going to go into the pits. We're going to go on the soft tyres, of course. Timing the clutch. So we get a 2.5 second pit stop. And I think we've done a pretty decent effort of uh, negating the advantage of this undercut so i know i'm going to come out on one that fresher tires which is going to be significant um, at the end here so coming out of the pits let's see how much time we've lost so move four has gained a tiny bit and we have a car between him and myself now cba so we haven't really lost anything at all i think maybe like a few tenths maybe half a second to move four but we're in a really really strong position and again if you look on that top left, we're the only car that doesn't have a penalty. And this is because this is how I practice not getting a penalty. Races such as this, I want to try and win it as cleanly and efficiently as possible. And uh, if I can just work my raw pace over the qualifying, then that's going to make us very, 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 very strong when it comes into the competitive and the league racing. So right here now, I'm not interested in getting too close. I want these guys to try and fight just a little bit. Uh, so we've still got quite a lot of the battery here. So we've got about 75% of the battery. And because they move for makes it a bit of a mistake there. So is that pressure? Or I don't know what you could call that. So a bit of an uncharacteristic mistake from him. I'm considering I've raced him in a lot of lobbies. He's a very, very fast driver here. Um, but now that has actually meant that he's fallen behind uh, CBA up in front. So again, we're not going to be too no, not too anxious to be on the battery at the moment. We're just going to let these guys try and uh, duke it out a bit. And then when I see a clear opportunity, 
that's when I will use it. So, again, I know a lot of people probably screaming at me saying, why are you not using it now? I just like to really take my time and know when the opportunity is there for a guaranteed um, overtake. So, here again, um, these guys are using it. So, Moonfall was definitely used a little bit to try and overtake him going into this first sector. So, we're just going to sit behind and now we are on 100% of the battery but I did suspect because of how hard they were pushing before the pit stops and how hard they're pushing now I did suspect I had a lot more battery in them so when I see that red light flashing that's when I will completely strike as has a little bit of a lag spike there so we're just gonna let him back in front again no threat from behind because they are all on the medium strategy and even here now, we're not even using the battery here now because I want him to use it. So he's definitely using it again. So I want these guys to just waste their battery. And you can see the red light has now flashed. So that's, again, trusting your instinct a little bit. So I know CBA is going to be quite low on the battery. Uh, are we going to try and go around the outside of him here? Uh, we were thinking about it, but it isn't going to work. Now I'm using the battery because I was thinking about maybe making a move here because I know he's very, very low, but... Looks like he doesn't want to give up this position, so we're just going to let him have that. And does he leave the door open going down to here? So yes, he does. So we're going to go down the inside, going into here, leaving a little bit of room on that exit, leaving some room on the inside, barging wheels just a little bit. And are we going to get the traction with the fresher tyres? Yes, we are. And we're going to get the DRS. And with the straight line speed, and with him being low on the battery, you can see the straight line speed. That is the difference there. Now we are in the hot seat. Second place behind move four, and this is exactly where you want to be. And the difference with Silverstone in this game is that uh, last game you really wanted to be the car actually leading into the last lap because the dirty air through Magnus and Beckett's was actually quite significant. Whereas now on this game, the dirty air is definitely not as oh, big as it was. And the slipstream and the DRS is just so much more powerful. Like, you can see how much more power here we have here. So, we're actually going to overtake him. Because I want him to then overtake me next lap. So, then on the last lap, I'm going to have a free shot of him with the DRS. So, that was the plan going to. I didn't want to be the car leading going into this last lap. But still, we have a lot of battery on board. So, if we had to lead into this last lap, I think we have the straight line speed and the grip in the tyres to be able to actually uh, do it and actually hold him off. So, Carrefourity, I'm not going to be trying to pull away from him. I'm not going to try and break out of his DRS because that's going to be a pretty uh, impossible task at this stage of the race. So, we're just going to use a little bit of a boost. So, we don't want them to be following too closely. I still want him to be using a little bit of his ERS, make him think that I'm actually trying to break out of his DRS zone. So I don't want him to just be sitting behind and recouping all of that ERS because we only have one lap to go after this one. And see, again, using a bit of the boost because I can afford to use it because if I come into the last lap with above 60%, then I know I can push the battery to its maximum uh, deployment on this last lap. So coming through into here and again... On the previous game, you wanted to be the car leading because going through this section, the car behind would have a nightmare sticking with you. But on this game, it's much, much easier. And you can just see the straight line speed advantage is just absolutely crazy. So I actually wanted him to overtake me there. That's why I didn't use any of the batteries. So I think he knows himself with his experience and with his speed. He probably knows just as good as me that you need to be the car in second place. You don't want to be leading into the last lap because that is where the advantage lies. So, looks like he doesn't want to be in the car ahead. So, I'm going to push a little bit now. I'm going to try and eke out that gap. So, I really need about six temps before entering Maggots and Beckets to pretty much know that you're going to be coming out ahead at the end of the hangar straight. So, I'm going to be pushing very, very hard here. But, looks like he's managing to stay uh, quite close. So, I thought to myself at this point, it's going to be really, really hard to win this race. And you can see he's right up behind me. So he definitely, definitely has the pace. It's always a wonderful thing when you discover new talents online. It makes it very, very exciting. So 
I knew this was not going to be enough at this stage. But if you look at the detection point from Agnes Beckett's, it's coming up very, very shortly. And what do we do here? We actually pull over, let him have the position. And now we have the DRS going to here. So absolutely crucial that we get a really good exit coming up to straight. But look at the gap. The gap has four temps. We've got a little bit of a warning. But with the straight line speed, with the battery power, he's doing a Max Verstappen. What's going to happen here? Is he going to defend? No, he isn't. So we're just going to go down the inside at the end of the hangar straight. Bumping wheels, but leaving just enough room. And he's gone off the track a little bit here. So he's gone down the inside again, leaving some room. We go very slow on the apex just to make sure he can't do that cutback. And we played that to absolute GG. perfection. <laughs> GG to Moonfall. Oh, GG, man. Nice race. That was a very, very nice race. And honestly, doing races like this, they help so much in league racing in terms of getting the experience and knowing what to do. And yeah, that was a very, very intense one. So I just want to say, I really hope you enjoyed that. I really hope you learned something as well. Thank you so much for the support on the channel it really has been immense and it really does mean a lot to me i hope you have a fantastic christmas there won't be a video until monday and i will be doing opal lommies next week so if you join the youtube membership i will be doing it on all platforms and if you want a one-to-one -one coaching session with me go to www.coachlimitless.com thank you so much have a great christmas and i will catch you very very soon peace